When the courtroom opens, Olga returns to the witness stand, and Kristoff immediately breaks her. Yeah. Not. It turns out that Olga was working with Shoddy Smith, and that her waitress uniform and Russian accent were simply to cover her real job at the Borscht Bowl Club. For some reason or other, Shoddy wanted to smash Phoenix's legendary record. She claims to have planted a card in Phoenix's pocket before the game, and to have dealt five aces during the last hand, prompting Shoddy to search the defendant. Upon finding the card, Shoddy and Olga would have been able to call him out without recourse. That was the plan! Kristoff calls her out, though. The planted card was never found, and she has no explanation for that. Not to mention the lack of five aces on the board, Olga's insistence be damned. She testifies that Shoddy searched Phoenix and didn't find the card she planted, after which Phoenix attacked Shoddy. Apollo presses her, Phoenix wasn't cheating, so he had no reason to strike. W well Apollo responds to the sensation by pressing her further, and yet again... I, I did see it, honest! I, I saw it when Bright hit him! Nobody in the room, Apollo included, knows exactly where he's going with this, but he points out Olga's habit of scratching her neck and presents the murder weapon to explain why. But this is weird. Her neck should be fine. After all, the victim in this case is Shoddy Smith, and she wasn't hit by a bottle. Olga continues her testimony by saying that Phoenix sat at the table in days before the cops arrived, but Apollo's got her now. After all, who was it who called the cops? He presents Phoenix's phone, reminding us all that he in fact did leave the room to call the police. When he left the room entirely! <laughs> the man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant. It it's gone! The card's gone! You lose. Ah! You! Some master of cheating you turned out to be! That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If it came out that I was in league with Smith, I'd be a suspect for sure. Olga still doesn't admit to committing the crime, but Winston has been all but beaten into submission at this point. Kristoff takes the reins and insists that, by process of elimination, Olga is still lying. After all, the only people in the room were Phoenix, Olga, and the victim. Phoenix interjects too, however, and brings up that fourth person possibility. Not only that, he claims that the fourth person, someone who thought that the cards were blue, is standing in this courtroom right now. There's only one person who had talked about the cards being blue, and only blue, before their colors were revealed to the court. As I expected. Your eyes and ears are sharp as your hair. It, I was right? Christoph Gavin. You were the fourth person that night. Christoph begins by denying this, but Phoenix knows that he's got just as much connection to Shadi as himself. Kristoff tries to stop Phoenix from testifying, but the decision is Apollo's to make as chief counsel, and Apollo decides to hear him out, but he can't even cross-examine his own defendant before he exchanges words with Kristoff. You were planning this all along, weren't you, right? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Justice. So, sir! He's lying, and you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir. Phoenix says he had dinner with Kristoff before Shoddy arrived, and found Olga's planted card and put it into a bottle. However, the murder weapon has no cards in it. Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Still, there isn't much power behind that line of attack. Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. Phoenix says he left to call the police after Shadi and Olga's fight, and when he returned, Shadi was dead. He mentions the wound on Shadi's forehead, but the photo of the crime shows him wearing a hat. Phoenix now admits that he was the one who put it back on before the police arrived. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? Ahem, <coughs> pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through the case. Hmm. Hey, he's still our client! Isn't he? I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more like a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Kristoff. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. According to Phoenix, there was a reason for him to put Shadi's hat back on, and it had to do with his call to Kristoff that night. Kristoff, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well? Something like that. 
That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless blow in China paid? It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands, should it come to that. And yet another problem gets presented. How did Kristoff know that the victim was bald? The judge calls a recess before our co-counsel is to testify. Apollo finds himself alone in the lobby until a girl in a top hat arrives. It's the girl from Phoenix's locket, presumably his daughter. She doesn't give her name, but she does give Apollo a piece of evidence. The missing fifth ace! Wait, this blotch of red. Is this blood? When court reconvenes, Kristoff immediately tries to dismiss Phoenix's claim, but... I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. But Mr. Wright, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, you would have had to have been there in the hideout at the time of the crime. In other words, I must be the real killer, is what you're trying to say. This gets Kristoff to testify. He says he went to check on the hideout and saw Smith dead, Olga unconscious, and Wright with the bottle, all through a window in the corner of the room. Based on this testimony, Phoenix is clearly the killer. There must have been someone else there at the moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one, not a soul. B but that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah yes, this mysterious fourth person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Glad to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? And so we present our trump card. I'd like to take a moment to say that this game's writing is one of its greatest strengths, and while I could summarize the following exchange, I can't capture the magic of Phoenix and Kristoff's back and forth without letting it play out in full. Wh what? This is insane! Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could... could this be? Could this be the missing fifth ace? <clears throat> I inconceivable! How could you... What are you doing with that card?! Um, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh, that card? It's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock and trade, after all. Objection. No! Impossible! Unacceptable! Th the court can't accept this evidence! It's a fraud! A fraud? How can you be so sure? Th what? What? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real car from the crime scene. The real killer. Ugh. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... For the killer to take the car from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? Take another look at the photo. And at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor and a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose! The killer then took the card to hide the blood. Objection. R regardless that evidence is non-permissible! Oh? Right! Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer! You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence! Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. Well, what are you talking about? You wanted to know whether the killer would have taken a card from the crime scene. And now I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Objection! That this is baseless conjecture! Baseless! Objection! Oh, I assure you, it's quite based! Well, what? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Y yes Try picturing the scene of the crime. In your head. After that amazing scene, we begin to show exactly why that bloody ace is so important. The photo of the crime shows Shadi facing the table, but if the victim was knocked back by the bottom, there's no way any blood could have landed on the ace. So, Shadi was facing the wall. But, now it doesn't make sense that the killer, i.e. Phoenix, could have attacked him from the other side of the table. So we move the killer to the room's back wall, which is occupied by a cupboard. But, Phoenix asks, what if the cupboard wasn't there at the time of the crime? 
He and the judge ask a bailiff to examine the cupboard as well as a mysterious second object. For now, we assume that the cupboard is movable, and it slides right in front of that corner window Kristoff was so adamant about being a witness through. With that window blocked, Kristoff had no way of seeing the crime without being in the room himself. Apollo explains what really happened that night. Smith knocked Olga out, and Phoenix went upstairs. Kristoff entered the room, Shadi turned to face him, and Kristoff made his move. He noticed the bloody ace and realized how it would spell his doom, so he replaced it with a card that happened to be blue. Kristoff is a skilled attorney, though, and he fights back to the end. He brings up Phoenix's upside-down prints from Apollo's very first objection. However, one of the photos Olga took saves Phoenix's case. While sitting down with the bottle on the floor, it's natural to pick it up from the neck, inverted no less. Kristoff must have changed the murder weapon with one of the bottles near Phoenix's piano. Kristoff still isn't done, though. He asks for proof that the bottles are swapped, and fortunately, the second object Phoenix had checked out was another bottle. One with the five of hearts, confirming both his and Phoenix's testimony. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You, Mr. Kristoff Gavin! Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago? My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little tete-a-tete, -tete, right? Phoenix explains that the only place to corner a killer like Kristoff was in court, and he warns that he'll need Apollo's help with the dark times to come. With an ominous premonition out of the way, the judge announces his verdict. NOT GUILTY! As celebration, Phoenix makes it clear that he knew of Apollo's power, but has no intention of saying how he knows or how it works. Furthermore, he admits that he took the locket from Shadi. A locket with Phoenix's daughter on it? Just how many more mysteries are going to come up after this case ends? One more. Phoenix's disbarment. In case the seeds haven't sprouted yet, Phoenix lost his badge after a trial seven years ago, and he even admits to forging evidence in today's trial. The forged evidence is, of course, the bloody ace, whose real copy Kristoff stole. It's enough to make Apollo punch him, not that Phoenix doesn't understand. A punch in the gut for a punch in the gut. And that's how Apollo Justice's first case ends, with more questions than answers. How do Phoenix and Kristoff know each other, and why were they so sarcastic to each other in court? Why did Shadi want to ruin Phoenix's record, and why did Kristoff kill him? Why did Apollo get those weird sensations during Olga's testimony, and how did Phoenix know he would? Why did the victim have a locket showing Phoenix's daughter, and how was Phoenix able to go undefeated at poker for seven years? And, perhaps most importantly, just what happened seven years ago? Why exactly isn't Phoenix a lawyer anymore? To briefly explain why this case is great, I'll first mention that Olga is a great tutorial witness, particularly because she's not fully conforming to the tendencies of one. She's, spoiler alert, actually telling the truth sometimes, and the fact that her truth is often found in what sounds the most suspicious or unbelievable really lends to her name. Her not being the killer was a very nice move to make, because again, she's able to lie and tell the truth, and the player doesn't know that until the facts are revealed in the second half. It's all too easy to spend the entire first half of the case suspecting Olga, and it's easy to pick up on the game since that she isn't the killer on repeat playthroughs. This case foreshadows itself very well in general, actually. From Kristoff being the killer, to the mysteries that surround this case and linger for the rest of the game, a lot is set up and just enough gets resolved to make people want to know more, to know the rest. And again, this is the tutorial case. It's probably better written than the second and third cases, in my opinion. The characters' interactions showcase their personalities and relationships, as well as their roles in the case and story at large. Phoenix constantly knows more than he's letting on, and is drip-feeding Apollo knowledge to train him. Winston is as hilariously smug as ever, and woefully pathetic by the back half of this case. Kristoff goes from calm to cranky in a way that's genuine, and you can hear the tension between him and Phoenix, even without my dub. And Olga is a great spin on the tutorial witness, as I just mentioned. It raises expectations higher than a stack of noodle bowls for the second case, but as for whether Turnover Corner reaches them, the only way to know is to proceed on.